Okay, so section 4.6, uh, change of basis. That's the focus of, of our class today. Um, you know, choosing a basis B for an n-dimensional vector space B is the same as choosing a coordinate system of B via the associated coordinate mapping to Rn. So this one, I think we discussed a little bit in our last class, it's a coordinate vector, because when we have two different coordinate system, and how can, how can we change from one system to the other system? That's what we discussed. Let me just recap what we did in our last class. Okay, this is the same, um, you know, same graph that we have discussed in our last class. Suppose this is the point you can see, let me represent that point as X. Then X equals, you know, if you look at the coordinate of X, now there are two kinds of graphing system here, right? Two kinds of coordinate system. One is made out of the green lines. And if I write using the green line, it will be um, one, two, okay, green. This is two, three, four. Okay, X is four. And then this one is one, two, and three. Okay, four and three. But if I use a red system, which is, I call it B coordinate of X, then what I can write is I'm using the, you know, red coordinate system here, which means this is one, and this is another one, two, and then this one is one, two and one, right? Okay. Now, the question here is that the basis, if I look at the basis for, this is actually in standard. So the green lines are standard basis, okay? So this one, so green is, green graph is, is standard basis that we are familiar with. And the red one is a new basis. Okay, red is a new basis. Now, basis means it's a vector that creates the whole graph. Now, what is the basis, the standard basis here is, the green one is actually, the first one, as you can see here, this guy right here is one and zero, okay? And another basis is this guy right here. So it is zero and one. X is, you know, here X is, okay? This vector right here can be represented at one and zero, and this vector can be represented as zero and one. Okay, that's the that's the standard basis. Now, what is the new basis? Is as you can see, the new basis is made out of three and one. So the red vector here is made out of three of those and one here, and then another is negative two and one. Okay, so we have two bases here. I represent that basis by let's say C1, C2, and I represent this basis by B1 and B2. Okay, now, what it means is when I write simply X and if I want to write, this is C coordinate, standard basis is actually, let me represent that by C coordinate vector, C coordinate ve vector, and this one is B coordinate. Now, I can write this, this guy right here as XC. So I can represent that as XC. In the previous example, we just represent that as X because this was a standard basis. So sometimes 
when we have different base, if it is not a standard basis, but we have something different basis, then we must represent, we must write down what is that basis, uh, you know, coordinate system is about. Therefore, what I do is for simplicity, I just represent this standard basis by, uh, you know, coordinate C, I call it coordinate C. So I can write this as four and three, same thing. Now, let us recall the formula from previous. Let me remind you, let me, you know, let us recall what we did in our last class, okay? In last class, uh, we did a two formula on changing the, changing the coordinate vector. What we said is that, recall the formula from previous class, formula number one. What we said is that x equals p b b coordinate. This is called change of coordinate matrix. We call it change of coordinate matrix and then b coordinate of x. That's one formula. And another formula that <clears throat> we did is uh, b coordinate of x can be calculated by B inverse B, B inverse of the B coordinate, you know, change of coordinate matrix and X, that's what we wrote. Now, remember, in this case, what I'm gonna do is I represent that X by XC, okay? As you can see, I represent that X by XC. So now my new formula will be C equals this change of coordinate matrix P to the standard basis. It is a change of coordinate matrix B to the standard basis. Now I suppose that is standard basis by C. So how I write this is standard. This is a this is a weird symbol, guys. Okay, it is B to C. Change of coordinate matrix from B to the standard basis C. And X B. So the same formula, but we'll write this way now because we denote that standard uh, graph as C graph or C coordinate and the new graph as B coordinate. So we'll write this way, okay? Why do we do that? Well, sometimes you will get not the standard um, coordinate system. For example, here, both of the coordinate system are not a standard one, right? They are both different. So in that case, we need to define a certain you know, basis for that. So now, how do we write this? How, do the, how does this uh, formula number two will convert is this, B. Now this one will be, you can write P inverse. What we're gonna do here is that you can write this as P inverse B to C and X means XC or, or you can also say that B coordinate of X equals, what we do is we C to B. We convert C coordinate to B coordinate and XC, this one or this one. This is the formula that we'll be using, either this one or this one. And here, this one, it's the same formula. Okay, now let's work on that. Let's look at example two. Is there any example one or oh, there is no example? Okay, let us let me write this as example one or two, whatever. Here, consider two bases. So we are given two bases here, three, one, negative two and one, and the standard basis C, one, zero, and zero, one in R2. Find the find change of coordinate matrix P from B to C. Okay, this is what we want to find. And if B coordinate of X is two and one, find this using that formula, okay? Also find the change of coordinate matrix P from C to B. So we're gonna find this too. 
Okay, I'm gonna go all the way here, guys. Let me just copy that questions, okay? What is given here is given B basis for B coordinate is three one and negative two and one. So we are given these two vectors that will create, that will generate the, you know, coordinates that will generate the coordinate system. And another coordinate system C, which is created by the vector, which is uh, standard basis zero one and one zero. Okay, these are given. Now part A, we have to find, find change of coordinate matrix from B to C. We want to find that. That's the question. Now, remember the, the formula here is the technique that we'll be using here is this. Solution. Okay, to find P change of coordinate matrix from B to C to find this, what you do is consider let me let me write this way. This is my B1 and this is my B2. This is my C1 and this is C2, okay? So what we do here is that you see C, B to C. So C is on that side. So I'm gonna write C1, C2, and then B1, B2. Just write down this way. And this gives me C1 is 1, 0, 0, 1. And then B1, B2 is 3, 1, and negative 2, and 1. Okay, now all you need to do is now change the left-hand side, left part of the matrix into Isolan form. Okay, matrix to Isolan form. So the good news is this is already in Isalan form, okay, for this one. But sometimes it's not given like that. But here we are lucky that good news already in this is Isalan. Already in Isalan form. So so our change of coordinate matrix P, B to C equals whatever you have on the right hand side, that will be this. So that means our change of coordinate matrix will be 3, 1, negative 2, 1. Okay, part A is done. Do you have any question? Just in case, if this part is not in Isalan form, then you have to change this left part only into Isalan form. And whatever result in the right part, that will be the change of coordinate matrix. Please remember this. You need to memorize this, uh, this scheme, okay? Now, uh, part A is done. Now part B, what we are supposed to do in part B? Let's look at part B. In part B, given this, let me just, copy the question, part B, given B coordinate of X, B coordinate of X is given, which is two and one, and we need to find, oh, sorry guys, this one, I need to write all the way down. Part B, given B coordinate of X equals two and one, find C coordinate of X. That's what we need to find. Okay, now let us look at the formula. Okay, so the formula is, let me go all the way up. Formula is this. Okay, 
C coordinate of X equals change of coordinate matrix from B to C and X B. Let me just copy the formula, which is uh, change of coordinate matrix from B to C. Okay, change of coordinate matrix from B to C and then B coordinate of X. That is the formula. Now, this means this guy we already know. Change of coordinate matrix, this is what we already found. So I just copy that matrix 3, 1, negative 2, and 1. And then this B coordinate of X is already given 2 and 1. So can you please help me? What is this? The, the product of these two matrices. So the, the product is all of you guys got four and three because um, I trust that this is the right answer because it is very difficult to get the same wrong answer. And I think we already discussed uh, graphically before. Okay, part B is done. Part C, what we are supposed to do in part C, let me go back to the question. Also find change of coordinate matrix from C to B. Okay. So we need to find part C. The question is this. Find change of coordinate matrix from C to B. Okay. So there are two ways to find this. Okay. Method one. P C to B is actually can be found to find that, let me write this way, to find this, consider the matrix you see, notice here, this first there is B and then C so what you're going to do is you want to write B1, B2, the basis for B coordinate first, and then basis for C coordinate later. So C1, C2, write down that. So which gives me B1 is, um, what is B1 by the way? 3 and 1 and negative 2 and 1. Did I copy the right thing? B1 and B2, yes, okay. And then C1, C2 is 1, 0, 0, 1. So all you need to do is you need to change the left-hand part, left side, left part into a certain form, okay? Now change the left part into Isalon form. And the whatever result on the right-hand side So the result on the right part will be the answer. Okay, so please change this into its own form. Let me know 1001. What do you get on this side? I'll wait guys for you. If you change this left part into Isalan form, so the result will be one over five and two over five there, it will be negative one over five and three over five. Did I copy the, you already gave, gave me the answer in the, in the chart, but let me check. Yeah, okay. This is what we get, that's it. Okay, so change of coordinate matrix from C coordinate to B coordinate is one over five, negative one over five, two over five and three over five. That's method one. Now let's look at method two. So some of you already uh, used the method two and found the answer, that's great. So the method two is we know change of coordinate matrix from B to C can be written as inverse of 
C to B is inverse of B to C, okay? You see change of coordinate matrix P from C to B is actually inverse of change of coordinate matrix from B to C. And we already have that from part A. So from part A, we have change of coordinate matrix from B to C equals three, one. Uh, what is that again? Three, one and negative two and one. We already found this in part A. All we need to do is find the inverse, okay? So P C to B equals P change of coordinate matrix from B to C inverse, which means three, one, negative two, one inverse. And that's gonna give me, uh, I trust that you know how to do it. So it's gonna give me one over the determinant, three times one minus negative times one. And then, and then we switch that. So one and three, we're gonna get negative one and two. So that's what we got. And so that's gonna give me one over five uh, and one, two, negative one and three. So that's gonna give me one over five, negative one over five and two over five, three over five. So we get that. So it doesn't matter which method you use you will still get the same thing. But the thing is, you know, sometimes if the matrix is not two by two, then finding inverse is a little bit complicated. So I suggest, I personally like this method, the method one, okay? I personally like that, but if you like method two, that's, that's okay. Especially when it is two by two, then I think method two is easy. But if the matrix is not two by two, then method one would be easy, okay? So, um, Any question? So if you don't have any question, I want to add one more question here just for fun, okay? So part B, using part C, find C coordinate of did we find B first? What did we find in part A? We found, uh, oh, we already found. So let's find B coordinate of X. If, if C coordinate of X is given to B, let's say C coordinate of X is given to be four and three, for example. Okay, this is the extra questions I, I just want you to do just for fun, okay? So using part C, find B coordinate of X if, if C coordinate of X is four and three. So the formula is B coordinate of X equals Look at the formula. Let me just point out that formula here. We developed that formula at the beginning. So the formula is this, where is that? Here, here, right there. Okay, P inverse B to C, X C. So the formula is change of coordinate matrix B to C inverse and this one, this is the formula. Now let us, let us substitute the value. So we already got from part B, which is one over five, negative one over five, two over five, three over five. And then XC is already given, as you can see here, it's already given four and three. So I want you to calculate how much that will be. So this is two and one. Okay, so when you find the product. So this is our B coordinate of X. So what it means is, if we use a B coordinate, 
So remember what we figured out here is that this is what we found. This is what we found, you see? C coordinate of X is four and three and B coordinate of X is two and one. And that is actually we found by looking at the graph. But even if, if the graph is not given, then we can use that formula to find out. Now let's look at one example, which is, uh, which is uh, example five. Okay, let's try example five. This is B1, B2 is given, C1, C2 is given. And I want you to find, you. I want you to, you know, um, find change of coordinate matrix from B to C and change of coordinate matrix from C to B. And if B coordinate of X equals two and five, find C coordinate of X. So guys, I want you to try this example five on your own, maybe in the breakout room, okay? Before we start example one, I would like to ask you one simple questions. For example, if you have X equals, let's say, recall from our previous um, section, okay, coordinate vector. So if we have X equals, let's say two um, B1 plus three B2. And uh, if I ask you, what is your B coordinate of X, for example? if X equals this one, what is the B coordinate of X? So what it means is we just write the, you know, two and three, right? So yeah, you already know this, yeah? Okay, so we need to know this. Now, let's look at example one. Consider two bases, B1, B2, and C1, C2. For a vector space V such that B1 is, okay, so B1 is this. So that means you can write, if I ask you, if I ask you, what is the C coordinate of B? Now, B1, C coordinate of B will be, just write three and one, okay? Just the number, this is three C1 and one C2. So C coordinate of B1 is this, and C coordinate of B2, you see, when there is B, then we write B here. When there is C this side, then we'll write C there. Just keep that in mind. So this C coordinate of B2 will be negative two and one, okay? That's we know. Now, what is given here? Suppose X is given. So here given X equals two B1 plus B2 and find, find C coordinate of X. So what it means is now you see X equals two B1, we already know B1 is, 3C1 plus C2, right? Substitute the value of B1. So B1 means 3C1 plus C2. Plus, what is B2? B2 is also given, which is negative C1 plus C2. Any question, just substitute the value. Substitute values of B1, B2. Okay, when you substitute the value, this is what you're gonna get. So that means you're gonna get 6C1 plus 2C2 minus 2C1 plus C2. So what does that mean? Well, you can add them up, you know, combine the like terms. You're gonna get uh, 4C1 plus 3C2. So if I want to write C coordinate of X, so I'm gonna get four and three, that's it. Okay, so now in the same manner, I would like you to try example three before we take a break. So example three. So example three, B1 is given here and B2 is given there and X is given there. I want you to find this. Even though this is not given, I think we still can, will be able to find it. So this one, regardless, we can still find it, I think. Let's try that. Uh, 
okay example three there so what is given is given b1 equals minus 6 c1 plus c2 oh this is b2 sorry b2 is that and b1 is also given which is 4c1 plus c2 b1 and b2 is given and x is given and x is also given which is 3b1 plus b2 now all we need to do is we need to find c coordinate of x so find c coordinate of x so let's work it out so that means first x equals 3 b1 b1 is 4 c1 plus c2 plus b2 is negative 6 c1 plus c2 i want you to find you work it out and let me know what is the c coordinate of x write your answer in the chat box publicly okay so this is gonna give me 12 c1 plus 3c2 minus 6c1 plus c2 that's going to give me 12 minus 6 is 6c1 plus 4c2 this is my x by the way and so my c coordinate of is 6 and 4 that's it so um yeah so if you know how to do these two concepts that we um, you'll be able to solve all the problems in this uh, exercise. Okay, guys, if you have any question, let me know. Otherwise, uh, you know, this, this section is actually done. Okay, so uh, example three, we have done with method one. And if you want to do with another method, let us look at that quickly and you choose whichever method you like. Okay, so given here, B1 equals given 4C1 plus C2. So you can write this C coordinate of B is actually four and one. And B2 is given which is minus 6c1 plus c2. And so your c coordinate of b is actually negative 6 and 1. Okay. And also given, uh, xb is also given in this example. What is xb? Uh, b coordinate of x is 3 and 1 is given. Okay. This is 3 and 1 is given. Now, find the question is find c coordinate of x so remember the formula okay so the formula is c coordinate of x equals p you know change of coordinate matrix from p b to c and b coordinate of x that is the formula where p coordinate of b to c is we already changed we already found the c coordinate of b which is this is B1, C, and B2, C. So you can write this. You know, this is defined this way. So basically what it means is we already have that, which is 4, 1, and negative 6, and 1. Okay? We already have that. So that means this guy right here is 4, 1, negative 6, and 1. And this guy, which is already given 3, and 1. And all you need to do is you just multiply this uh, two matrices. And let me know what you get. So uh, when you multiply these two matrix, you're going to get uh, four and four and six and four, sorry, six and four. And that's what we got earlier, right? So this is the same thing. Now, out of these two method, you can use any method that you like, but ultimately the answer will be the same. Uh, this, this is uh, actually all the things that we are supposed to do in this section, okay?